I was expecting it to be like a poor, poor city, but now I was very rich. just as the sun was setting, and my opinion of Budapest completely changed. I saw how beautiful the city is. The Royal Castle, Matthias Church, Parliament, and the Chain Bridge were all visible from the boat. Their facades illuminated, and their reflections dancing on the water of the Danube River. I can't wait to see these sights up close. So, how do you compare that Chain Bridge to the Charles Bridge that we saw in Prague? Oh man, they're both beautiful. I think the Charles Bridge in Prague was more decorative, it had statues and stuff, yeah. but this one looks beautiful, especially at night. It's beautiful! Yeah, it's Today really is our pretty. first night here and we're really enjoying ourselves. I, I'm very glad we came at night. We get to see all the beautiful lights. It looks like a little parade or something. <laughs> it feels like Christmas. It feels like Christmas. Yeah, and we learned a lot about the two sides. Buddha and Pesh. I'm really enjoying the sightseeing tour. Um, I'm liking the little earpiece and all the history we're getting because now we're seeing like someone was saying about the the hotel we just saw was one of the best in the world and uh, now I know that that's not the parliament building that's actually the Buddha castle that's the parliament building over there I wish we had done this in Prague because yeah. I'm really enjoying this it's really beautiful I really like the metro system <laughs> oh yeah and that you can walk everywhere I I mean I think with gas prices and and you know how we're we're running low on one of our most valuable resources right now. We need to yeah. to make the most of you know what we have, and you know I just love I love how you can get around here and you don't need a car. You know, you just you just walk. Everyone, well, not everyone, but the majority of people are so fit from walking everywhere, and everything is you know just right at your fingertips. You can go anywhere and see anything. I'm just walking and enjoying and getting to the place where I need to be. And that's just great. And when we're back to the valley, gas prices are just... And St. McCallum doesn't even have sidewalks from where I live. I live like three minutes away from the university. And I mean, it has scattered sidewalks, but I can't walk to the university because there's no sidewalks. I'd be walking on, you know, on the street half the time. Našla pojem opatrně, už za odhorom vidím trně. We walked from the church we went to this morning to the castle. Yeah. And then we crossed the chain bridge. And then we walked all the way down to this Margaret bridge. We walked across. Kondor či kolibri, kondor aj kolibri. Kondor či kolibri, kondor aj kolibri. Day. Something, you there's, know? There's art everywhere. Over it's there. really yeah. sad. Like, I'm a music major, and they tell us if we want to get the full experience, we have to leave the valley. The voice majors do European programs to get the real opera experience, because in the valley, we don't have that. We go to summer string camps. We go to, we some people march um, DCI drum corps because there's no marching band. Program. The art appreciation right now in the valley is at a really low level. Mm -hmm. And it's really sad that we have to go outside because where we live doesn't support it. I love being able to see street musicians playing Mozart string quartets and and real how they love their folk music and their traditional music. And then the value they place, there's concerts all the time everywhere. And these are, you know, cultural experiences that we really don't have. So if I could take anything back, I think it would be the appreciation of music. Of, all forms of music, but the especially art, classical yeah. music that they have here. Definitely. All those, we, we visited so many exhibitions and we visited uh, opera houses and 
I mean, their potential is so huge to, I mean, I was impressed by those paintings and one thing is to see them in the book, another thing just to see them, you know, like right in front of you. And when we were walking on the streets, all this music, all those passion for music, that's what, I mean, was just incredible. So I think definitely I agree with uh, Karina that definitely I would take that back home. And I think it's um, maybe it helps people to unite in a mm -hmm. sense. It makes us to, I mean, music, when you're in the opera house, it doesn't matter, German, Italian, Spanish. I mean, it's still the same beautiful music which unites us, and that's what I think the valley needs the most. The church was popularly named after King Matthias. We started with my presentation on the Matthias Church. This church is an example of very eclectic style of architecture and has very rich history here in um, Budapest. We are surrounded by the Fisherman's Bastion. It has seven towers, which stand for the seven houses of Budapest. The inside was the most beautiful place I've ever seen created by man. The walls and ceilings are covered by these stunning, impossibly elaborate patterns that I don't think I could ever tire of. So the windows, you can see the, like a storyline. Yeah, the stained glass is much clearer. And yeah. <laughs> apparently the stuff that they would use some kind of a assault thing in the glass that we can't even reproduce today. It wasn't just the stained glass and the ceilings, but that I could identify several of the famous elements of the church and what they signify from my research that made the experience so special. The colors come from the ancient Hungarian uh, artistic style, so it's like this Hungarian art nouveau, and so they had to stick to these ancient patterns, and they probably just drew them on first and overlaid paint. Yeah, but you think about Vienna, we didn't see on the wall so much. So many characters. Like but here. you did see in Vienna a lot of chiseling, a lot yeah. of. This doesn't have that much sculptural, sculptural refinement as Vienna did, but it does have a ample color schemes and patterns. Well, it's very different. Uh, actually, Alana's presentation was very helpful. I was expecting all the colors. I want to know the significance of the flags. We're gonna go and find out. Did anybody find out what all the flags? Are? I don't know. Yeah, you notice they're kind of. They look very old. And the cut, well may, maybe, but the cut is also not sharp. Well usually, you know, like uh, in uh, Saint-Denis in Paris, they have the orange flag that is called the oil flame. It's the uh, flag that uh, King Louis X, who was Saint Louis, carried into battle. And so whenever the French kings were going to go into battle, they would take the oil flame. So, and it also has that kind of... Uh, uh, triangular and ragged kind of pennant shape to right. it. Uh -huh. So I was wondering if these were those kinds of flags, but I, I don't You mean know. war flags? Yeah. Yeah. Might be. We have no idea what this is, but apparently people are dropping coins in here. And some people have a theory that you have to pray, make a prayer before you put in a coin, and other people are saying that it won't come true unless it actually falls through the grill. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure what it does, but either way I'm going to drop like, a lot of money here. I'll be saved. Um, I haven't really been exposed to Budapest culture. This is my first time, or Hungarian culture. But from uh, seeing the insides of the church, I can, I don't know, I can tell it's very rich, uh, very old. And uh, I'm very happy that, at least as evidenced by this church, the culture from the 9th century or 11th century has been they try to preserve it to this day and the details of the church I think tell that it's very moving I've never seen anything more beautiful than that